Old Testament customs of language. What do you know about Old Testament customs? Don't read the book. <laughs> yeah. Old Testament customs, customs of marriages. Of marriages. Yes. Who initiates the plans for marriage? Generally. Well, the, the parents want the parents. The parents must have done it. Most cases, it would be the father. It would be the father. And he would select the son. Now, the Old Testament customs in the Bible, obviously, wasn't really that much different from the Near Eastern cultures. It was only the father that mm. initiates. You go to the Bible, Genesis 24, you have Abraham and Isaac. Mm. He sends his servant. Um, but the beauty of that story is, is, is the leadership of Yahweh in the choosing. Not necessarily the servants or, or Abram's uh, choosing of, of a wife. It's, it's Yahweh's leading because he comes and he says, I don't really know who it is that you want um, for Isaac. Hmm. So help me and show me. And then he says to the Lord, if this and this and this happens, then I will know that it's a... It's very specific in the way he deals with God. Um, and says to him, help me, give me a sign. So he tells him. Show me this way. And he answers in that, in, in, in that specific manner, in that order, in the way he prays to him. But also, the other thing is in that particular story, because it's always seen that women are not active participants in, in, in their choice, or that the man just can't come along, or the father comes along and makes the choice. In this story, that is not true. She must make a choice whether she wants to leave with him or not, and that is written into the text. Mm. Um, he, because he claims here that they are not just always passive partisans, but that particular story shows something else. Uh, if you look in general, then I can understand what he's saying. Uh, the, Genesis 29, you have Laban who gives his daughter to Jacob. Um, Jacob comes and asks his father's daughter is not around. Mm. So yea, he needs the son asking himself. Uh, for the daughter in marriage. Um, but Laban has to give that daughter. She can't choose for herself. And then in that case, she's the best of what You have 34, 8, you have Shechem and Dinah. Uh, Shechem was uh, Haimo's son, and then you have Dinah, which is Jacob's daughter. And Shechem actually rapes Dinah in this story. And then he asks for a hand. Hmm. Yeah, and they are dealt with. Not a very good ending to the story for them. You have Aiga, um, Ishmael's mother, who was thrown out, and she takes the initiative on behalf of Ishmael to find a wife for him. So there's, there's various uh, um, ways in which uh, uh, people acquired their wives and would took initiative sometimes, but that was, uh, like, like most things in life, is sometimes situational. Um, in Eastern culture, they still perpetuate this custom, especially in India, but not so much anymore. It has changed quite a bit. Not so in Western culture. And in they say there's East exceptions in Japan and India more recently. Um, Christian church has not felt compelled to follow the example of the Hebrew culture as reflected in the Bible. And there's no evidence that it is publicly binding either. The problem with our Western culture is the extreme individualism and the concept of romantic love, which has made the father's role as best man redundant. Mm. Just think about it. Mm. Why shouldn't the father be the best man? Why is it a friend? Mm. My father should have been my best man. Because he's the one teaching me, training me, preparing me. There should have been a relationship that had been valid over time. Which unfortunately, yes. most times doesn't. Yes. Then you have the association of young men and women. The problem is if we are going to select our own partners now, we're going to have to find opportunities to associate with each other to get acquainted. And there starts the problem. Because one needs knowledge and understanding of the opposite sex. <laughs> you may have no experience either. And so that means we are frequently unable to evaluate accurately what is desirable or undesirable characteristics of, of, of even of our friends in, in generally in life. 
we choose the wrong things sometimes because we don't distinguish between what is desirable and undesirable. We ourselves want to go explore without knowledge and then gain the knowledge out from people who might not even know best. In early childhood they say it's normal for us not to, to worry about what sex the person is. Um, so we just make friends and we play. Mm -hmm. And I watched them. Luan uh, was deaf now at the age of seven. And um, when he visited um, at the one uh, uh, cousin's home, yeah, the little girl there is, well, she's, yeah, she's five now. And that's what they did. They played. Mm -hmm. All day long they played. And it didn't matter. They just suddenly enjoyed themselves. Now, whether it's a boy or a girl, this is nothing. Uh, Untoward about this relationship, there's nothing that physically that they are, are looking at each other's bodies and uh, deciding, okay, that's why you're a girl and that's why I'm a boy. And maybe we should explore this concept. No, they're not even thinking that yet. Mm. It's only in adolescence where we develop more distinct sex characteristics and start to date the freedom of association prevails. The problem with dating is, is we don't always define dating for our children. Because dating should simply be an opportunity for me to get to know you. Yeah, very sure. Yeah, that's what it should be. But we've called it something else. Uh, what's the word that they say now? Um, got another word for it. The problem is, it is, is permissive parents who don't know to, who haven't drawn the lines themselves. Mm. Now they find themselves in a similar situation with the young kids, especially if I watch fathers with their young girls. And my question is always to them when they are going on like that about and telling the girls, I'm going to interview them, I'm going to do this thing with them. And my question is always to them, what did you do with other mama's girls? Mm. Now you're going on like this. Mm. Is it because of that that you worked? Mm. No, well, it, it is. It, it's more than likely that you are it because you were catching on nonsense in your days. Yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, and it is often said by men sometimes, and I'm being very chivalristic now when I make this statement, well, not me personally, but um, the, sh the statement is not chauvinistic because I often heard some of my friends say, ah, oh, they're just getting comfortable. That's mm. easy. Mm. That's how they used to describe it sometimes. Um, petting and social dates, uh, according to, to Vietel, is the basic cause of pre-marital problems. Now what they don't seem to understand is the progression of sin. It starts with something little, like a question. What did God say? <laughs> As in the garden. And we don't realize the progression of sin because what happens to her? She answers. Mm -hmm. She doesn't listen to his question and she is deceived. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had some terrible experiences with young people who, has, who oh, have been permissive. Uh, we were coaching at, um, what's it? I was coaching at the whole man of you. And when we were done with him, they had all passed. We took them for a drive. Um, and we were standing and chatting. And, and the one thing what was, was Oh, it's easy. We just decide. We do it. Pull up our pants and we walk away. It was that easy. That mm -hmm. simple for them. There was no attachment, no thinking. It was pure, pure physical, physical, physical pleasure for pleasure them. For yeah, them. they called it pleasure, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And they walked away, not thinking about the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, my discussion when they came upon one of the discussions, uh, it was a group of. of Close and speaking, mm. guys um, from the Eastern Cape that was down here also found work and they were discussing um, sex and stuff like that. And it was a free for all the discussion, as if it was normal. Now, understanding their culture that they sometimes explore to see the uh, lady is uh, fertile, mm. so she might end up with more than one child before she actually gets a husband. Mm. Because the one who lays with them who sees it might not, might not have done it for the cultural reasons. Mm. 
and she is thinking culture over there is not. But that, 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 that is how she wants to attack. And he's trying to teach her it's not necessary to attack that way. There's other ways of attracting um, if the boy is interested. So he's not, she's now 14, 15, and that's the worst mm -hmm. ages for them when they start the changes. And he's going to manage this stuff. <laughs> A cheerful and positive disposition. Nobody likes our people with gloomy faces. Mm. Uh, courtesy and consideration are not updated. Uh, each should be willing to listen to what the other person says and not dominate the conversation. People have their own opinions. And boys and girls must be taught to listen. Because it's, going, it's a characteristic that they are going to need for marriage. It's, it's uh, uh, not a character, it's a, um, a habit, in fact, that they are going to need a good habit to this listen. Mm -hmm. We continue attracting interest. Uh, words reveal a person's inner character and being. A person will attract the kind of person that he portrays himself to be. In the, in the odd cases, that might not be so, especially if somebody wants to take advantage of your <clears throat> Social relations are strengthened by a person being himself. Don't pretend you're going to be found out. Never pretend. Teach your children never to pretend. Because if once people consider them to be devious, they might play the same game and they will get harmed, or they might not like them, and they will get be distanced and lose friends. In fact, in marriage, speaking the truth is one of the key things that's going to glue you together, that's going to help you make the, the adjustments at the right time. Even if it's going to hurt someone. Even if it's going to hurt sometimes. Um, Yeah, you're opening up a can of worms now. <clears throat> like my one man said to me, what, what they don't know can't hurt them. Um, if you're in, in a serious relationship, if you're in a marriage and you're slept around, you've not only sinned against your own body, but you've sinned against your wife. And if you don't deal with that problem, you could find yourself in a very similar position later again. So I'm not going to advise you to be dishonest on these issues like that. Yeah. Um, you need to be truthful. If she finds out later, it's going to be worse than what you expected. It could be much worse. Yeah, the distrust, the fact that she is worse. Oh. And that could take years to rebuild or never. If. If. You see, there's a main thing, if it's my never be settled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No person is perfect, and you need to teach your children that. They are perfect, and their friends will never be perfect. The first thing you need to teach them is how to forgive themselves. Because once they learn how to forgive themselves, they learn how to forgive others. Yeah. You have to start practicing it on yourself. I'm not of myself, I'm not going to lie. Honesty and straightforwardness brings respect always. I have a, uh, he's now almost 30, but just so candid. I think sometimes he's a bit over the top, and I think sometimes it's a bit ugly. But I can appreciate the fact that he's candid. Uh, he doesn't hide his feelings. And most girls, like for that. They just like him for that. The fact that he's candid. Um, he's been going out with, the, with his girlfriend now for four years and they are planning to get married. I think it's possibly going to happen in the next two years. It's quite a long stint for a date. They are lives related for four years before we got engaged. Um, no, two years and four years later we got married. Well, no, two and two. Sorry, two and two. Four years. Uh, a person should not be interested only in attracting friends, but being a person who is worthy of other people's friendship. 
Be careful. Some may choose your friendship for the wrong reasons. Simply because they need something out of you. Teach your child that. Teach your child how to spot those kind of people. Not easy. Teach them. Courtship is a more serious and deeper and deeper with a person of the opposite sex. You see? And this is what I'm saying to you. When they say we're going steady, what do they mean going steady? What exactly when you when you ask your son, you're going steady with her, come talk to me, come sit me down. Define the parameters of going steady in terms of a spiritual relationship, in terms of a physical relationship, come and talk to me. Because I need to know how you're dealing with this thing. He needs to unwind what he means by going steady. Um, so what is acceptable age and health? There's no set rule. Yet the idea is for the man to be two to three years older than the woman. Obviously you've seen it work in different situations, with the woman being older and the man being older, but there is advantages and disadvantages when there's quite a big gap between the ages, or the woman being too old, or a man being almost 60 and the woman being 35. The point is he's, but he's almost old, <coughs> and he's marrying a 35-year-old woman. All right, um, in love said. White spans in age require major adjustments. There's the social interest and vigor, that's what I was referring to, and the declining sexual interest. On average, men also die at a younger age than women, so she's going to be a widow for quite some time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I never think about this. <laughs> Personally, I think men should be old to accept responsibility and should have the ability and stability to provide for family needs. So the, the men who get decided to get married needs to place himself in a position that he's going to be able to look after family. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a difficult thing to say if you look at what's happening in this country in terms of just uh, um, the unemployment rate. It's high. It's extremely high. And these men must now provide for families and are looking to get married and, and looking to a future, but he can't. There's this woman who's saying that this man doesn't have a job. How is he going to provide for us? Uh, it's complete disarray. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to change the values of people. But that's what people are faced with every day. That's what you're going to have to deal with when you just counsel them. All the is important. So I asked the question today, but this is how I phrased, phrased it to them. I said, if you, if you interview two people for, for marriage, and you find out that the one had a sex, he was sexually active, previously the other one has not. Obviously, in one sense, the one person might be at a disadvantage, um, because this partner who has had sex might be uh, uh, going to put pressure on the woman to perform in a certain way, or as a man to perform in a certain way, because either who had sex before the marriage. Mm -hmm. um, but now, my question was this, if he's had sexual activity prior to the marriage, one or the other, should I advise him to actually go for a medical test? Sure. I would say if he's been sexually active, active yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. The, second, uh, the response came back. Once he's done it, they need to go and sit down somewhere privately and he needs to come clean yeah. relating to STIs, to AIDS and whatever. Now it might not necessarily even include that. It might also include the fact that the doctor may pick up something which is going to affect him medically later. What about the fact of, of, of terminal illnesses you see in the family, they might discover that he has a terminal illness. Now what? Are you still going to marry him? Because we don't often advise for them to go for medical checkups to try to manage really. And one thing, hmm. but it, it, it really made me think this often when I was sitting and reading this. Yeah, that's a long that's at stake. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. You see, health is important. The reason why health is important is because if one part becomes sick and the other one didn't know about uh, um, hidden illnesses because the other one didn't come clean, mm -hmm. accomplishments may be put on the back burner. There's increased responsibility on the healthy partner and there's a financial strain. So there's lots of things that can happen later on in the marriage. 
Similar education and ability. It's good for both to be on about the same educational level as a husband if there's to be an intellectual compatibility, full communication and mutual respect. And I thought of Ruth and Catherine, because they said to they said, even though she was a nun, she was a match for him. She was a wedding woman. <laughs> she was a true match for him. So you might not necessarily have uh, the same education, mm -hmm. but on an intellectual level, you might be his match without having the education, mm -hmm. and that might be sufficient in some marriages. Intellectual ability comes. So if you just sorry, if, so if you don't really connect on a, on an intellectual level with that person, you could have problems. You can have problems. You could have problems. Okay. Remember, you're sitting here. Uh, uh, you're a thinker. Mm. You know, ability compensates for the lack of equality in ed education. It makes possible individual progress and allows for mental and cultural compatibility between husband and wife. In some cultures, attitudes concerning the role of men and women are definitely changing. Uh, because most women are also now being professionals, starting to work, mm. taking on jobs. Uh, well, there's more women in the world than men, so we also need them to be part of the workforce, as it seems, um, if the work is going to get done. The level of a wife's education is no longer limited to cultural enrichment, but is looked upon as essential for a profession, and even sometimes for the income in a home. A man and woman who plan to marry should consider each other's education and ability in connection with their concepts of each other's roles as partners. Also, working environment has changed considerably with shift work more and more requirement. Um, that, that, that was just an, an, what we call an addendum, that's not part of it, no, There's common interests and idols. Interests and idols should be considered in choosing a mate. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to do all things together later in life. There might be things that you decide not to do together, and that's also okay. But there should be some stuff that is definitely common among for both of you. Mm. The relationship between companions is so intimate that the attitudes and actions of one affect greatly the vocational performance of the other. Um, let me just go um, this, um. For example, Paul says, the ministries of many men have been destroyed by companions who are not sympathetic or dedicated to such a vocation. Or, if you look at, for example, if a man has an interest in sports, he will find great compatibility with wife who has light interest. A person who has been called to the ministry to consider carefully the calling and interest in the vision of the person who he is thinking of for a companion. Compatible religious convictions. This, this is vital because they can belong to the same uh, Protestant group, but they might be in different churches. And there might be a, a, a distinction in certain doctrines, mm. and they might hold strongly to those doctrines. Mm. That could cause that. No, 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 no. Um, I agree with you. One, or one could be wrong to the apostolic, to, to, to the Catholic faith, and one to the Protestant faith. That too is almost incompatible because what are you going to teach your children now? One could be a Muslim and one could be a Christian. I know there are Muslims and Christians married apparently too. Mm. How they get that right, I don't know. So what do you teach the children? Yeah. These, these different types of strains that we put on the marriages that we do not consider before the time and how it's eventually going to end up. It is important in the harmony of husband and wife that they are members of the same church. There's strain if each has strong religious convictions which hinder spiritual growth. If, if, if early on you detect that your religious convictions is going to hinder the spiritual growth, because that's going to be part of your discussion before you get married, and you need to stop. Mm -hmm. Right there. Those who marry the Lord experience strength and support in their service to Christ rather than hindrance. Some of the backgrounds, for example, somebody coming from a rural agricultural background will have the views and philosophies from one, city, from one of a city and industrial background. Think of somebody that's wealthy and somebody with limited economic resources. The one doesn't want, what, that is, is not necessarily going to waste while the other might have too much and doesn't know what it needs to save. Um, 
they spend easily. That is not necessarily always true for the wealthy, because they now have to work with money. But that's just an example he's giving there. Consider different nationalities. Consider the vast cultural differences which she parades them. I have a friend now who's going out. He's white. She's black. And he was wise enough when this when he saw this thing happen that he talked it out with her and they went to the pastor early. So they're now in discussion with him already. Mm. So it looks like something serious might be on the horizon if they've taken this to him. Mm. But because they realize it could possibly be a problem in the future. So they're dealing with it very early. Mm. Satisfactory adjustments can be made only if both are flexible and adaptable. And that requires mutual respect. As a rule, when you start a relationship, visit each other's home. Why? Because you're going to see exactly what it might look in the end. Much can be learned about the personality and ideals of the potential made by visiting in his or her home. The happiness and mood of the parents' home, tidiness of the house, the girl's participation in the preparation of the meal, the activities of the family at the, at the table. That might just show you what, uh, how she understands responsibility, how she understands orderliness. And you might be a very really orderly person, but now you might end up with somebody that's completely disorderly or vice versa. And that becomes a, a bone of contention. Yeah, it builds up tension yeah. and it builds up arguments. Yeah. The thing is, if you can sort that out early enough and is willing to make those adjustments early enough so I can live with this. Yeah. But then you nearly make it consider because the person might that that eventually to your voice in the case of yeah. that happens. Courtesy and good manners become evident, more evident in the family circle. You hear that? Because outside we put up a front sometimes. That's the problem. You don't know what you get. Um, adaptability, two qualities are necessary for making adjustments in marriage, namely adaptability and cooperation. No one should dominate the other. Each should move towards a position that is agreeable to both. And genuine companionship suggests voluntary servitude. You need to consider these two traits if you are in dating as well. If the person is adaptable, because when adjustments is going to come, that trait is going to be very necessary. When adjustments is needed, cooperation is going to be a trait that is a requirement. Because the one is going to look out for the other. Emotional maturity. A mature person exhibits insight and foresight in his thinking and is able to evaluate himself realistically. So it starts with you. Being able to know who you are as a person. He is able to anticipate the results of his actions, make sound judgments and decisions, demonstrating a sense of independence and assumed responsibility for his own behavior. He's not going to blame her for anything. He's first going to look to himself. A mature person is able to give as well as receive love and affection. He does not act impulsively but shows flexibility, control and adaptability. And what passage does this make you think of in the Bible? One Corinthians 13. Although no person is mature in every area of progress, if one understands causes, of immature action. There's progress if one understands the causes of immature actions. Persons with neurotic or psychopathic tendencies have difficulty in making adjustments in human relationships. Now, if you don't know what the symptoms of a neurotic or psychopathic person is, then go look it up, discuss it with your children, help them understand. Dependency or strong feelings of inadequacy result in immaturity. That, that's what we spoke about just now. Dependency, um, the girl can't let go of her mother. So if there's a problem, she runs to mommy. She doesn't want to deal with you. So she walks away and go deals it. Husband again, something happens, he does not. So he picks up the bottle. It's a no, they call it automatic response, an injured reaction. Not so. Um, it simply means that either you your dependence on or these feelings of inadequacy that you may not have dealt with. There could be other causes for it also. But it's an issue that needs to be sorted out before the marriage. Myth of fact, marriage will change you. So says 
a very gullible person. Seeking God's will, committed Christians realize that they are designed by God for a purpose, and therefore God has a plan for each, which includes every activity and relationship of life. We see God's will because we recognize the possibility of human error. People may put their best foot forward during dating to hide undesirable characteristics. And that is why if you seek God's will, then God will show up the darkness. What is dark? If it comes to the light, it will show itself out to be dark. Mm. Darkness please. Therefore you need to seek the light. You need to seek God. <clears throat> Another reason for seeking God's will is the recognition that God's plan includes the right companion. God will give us instruction how to concerning whom a Christian should marry. He has promised to answer prayer that is according to his will and in faith. <clears throat> His will can only bring joy much more than one can gain through selfish desires. And then there's the engagement, which we're going to look now in the next lesson. Engagement is a step beyond going steady in the journey to marriage. It's a commitment by each to marry. A commitment by each to marry is made. So there is different plans now. But also a tentative by marriage date. All matters concerning marriage and life should have been discussed frankly. It's a time for growing towards each other and for testing the satisfaction we arrived from being devoted solely to each other. And now the major adjustments will come. To the honeymoon period. And that honeymoon period is vital because that's where you need to do a lot of talking. The couple should reevaluate the advisability of marriage. And this also happens during the engagement period. They never discuss whether they are ready or compatible, or it is, or that this is God's will. And that evaluation needs to take place. Because if they made a mistake, it's final. You can either change your mind before than after. Mm. The length of engagement is also an issue sometimes. If it's too long, there's a strain of resisting the more intimate relationship. If it's too short, it might be insufficient time for the evaluation of lifetime commitment to each other, but that's not necessarily true always. There are six matters which the engaged couple should, should discuss. Roles, place where they will live, source of income, church affiliation, spiritual growth, and children. Views of them, if they can provide for them, discipline, that type of thing. Make contact with the minister, obviously. Right, about four to six months before the time. More and more ministers are insisting on extensive marriage counseling. Since marriage is a lifelong commitment, couples should be willing to spend more time in study and preparation for it. There is counseling aids, understanding one another, how to make adjustments in marriage, and the sexual nature and needs of their companions. That's what counseling is going to help you with. Many couples succeed apart from counseling sessions, and that is true. However, most would have benefited greatly from them and would have found the adjustment easier had they known more about the various areas of companionship. Alright, so now we're looking at lesson 4, which is pretty medical counseling. One of the things when we were college, especially when we did counseling, this is one of the things that they had to, to us. They said to us, guys, you're going into the ministry. You need to read up on these things. It's an important part in your ministry. All this changes the much, and you need to be filled up on a lot of other things. And one of the things is that you should possibly go and study is, is, is psychology. And there's a few ministers who have completed their psychology degrees precisely because a lot of their work is counseling. Not only in the couple counseling session, but the attitude they understand everything about the sexual relationship. Two means of introducing the need for adjustment in physical relations of taking books. Let them going to listen, let them going to read. And then when they come back, they ask them to discuss what they do not fully understand. But that also means that you might you must be fully clued up on the materials that you gave them and have read a little more. So that when they raise issues, you may be able to answer them simply from your knowledge or out of experience. I mean I know what work to do. So I had no idea. Um, I have a friend again who says to me, Glenn, I didn't know 
But what I did was I would look up every available book that I could find. They took initiative to do that again. Mm -hmm. To read up on the subject. <coughs> the instruction on the physical relationship in marriage should include an understanding one of the anatomy of both man and woman, because we think we know actually how it works, and some of we don't really understand the anatomy. We, it must include an understanding of the emotional needs and responses, conception and birth control, and an evaluation to determine if any emotional disturbances will prevent satisfactory sexual adjustments. Why? Because some people attach shame and guilt to sex. And that might be an issue in your marriage. <coughs> Things that is going to have to be Defined. God gave this to us, and it's something that we may enjoy. We don't always necessarily look at it that way. What happens within the relationship these days is very private. There's lines that may be crossed or may not be crossed for those two couples, and what works for them might not work for other people. But there's obviously lines. Um, <clears throat> Knowledge is vital for both the couple and the pastor to elucidate on matters that are unclear. Assignment, encourage complete the reading material which was given during the previous sessions. So you're constantly telling them to study and to read and to gain knowledge and insight. Section 4, which is the last session, solving potential problems and planning the ceremony together. Because they're starting life, to, they're almost starting life together. And the council may lead them in discussion of areas of compatibility and help them to define the activities they plan to share together and those which they desire to do separately. You don't have to do everything together. Mm. No, it's only people who it may be only people who don't trust each other that won't allow the other person to yeah. do something separately. Attitudes regarding adjustment needs to change now and they <coughs> need to start. You need to start practicing it. Don't hope for change. <coughs> then there's a review of the reading material. Evaluation of the read material and the practical impressions can also be discussed here towards the end. So you can go back to what they've read, talk about issues that they might not have covered or wanted to ask about. Controversy cannot be avoided. It's going to happen in the marriage. Whether you like it or not, there will be controversy. And so, Vintel and uh, husband and wife here is uh, in, in agreement. They say, this is the practical one. Face up to it, get down with it, work through the controversy. Mm -hmm. The quicker you face up, the, the quicker you attempt to work through it, the easier the next adjustment is going to be. Because you've grown now as a couple. Attitudes are important. Controversy arises because of self interest and soul, but it's also solved by consideration and concern for each other's well being. Very important, both of, 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 of the parties needs to adopt the same attitude. And in this case, consideration and concern for each other's well-being. <coughs> There's incidental matters. Couple decides on any area that needs to be revisited. So almost here towards the end, you will say to the person, is there anything that we need to revisit, need to discuss, that we've left out, that you think is important? Hopefully you've covered everything and done your work properly as a pastor. But there might be issues that they might want to revisit. I'm going to go back there. If it's not clear to them, help them. If there needs to be understanding, they should be comfortable enough to traverse any subject. So it could take some time before they really open up. And it might be at the very end. Mm. Planning the wedding ceremony, because obviously they are prerogative, how, how, but however, it is the pastor's responsibility to assure that the ceremony honors Christ, because marriage is to be according to God's will. However, it is the pastor's responsibility to ensure that the ceremony honors Christ, because marriage is to be according to God's will. I'm repeating myself now. A successful marriage must be based upon divine will. Therefore, the ceremony should reflect God's purposes and plan for marriage. Thank you guys.